Good morning, everybody. I'm Mehdi from Washington University. My presentation is about constant control of semi-linear fractional order systems with application in drug delivery. This presentation has four sections. In the first section, we will see some basic definitions uh, on fractional order systems. In the second section, we will see the state of the art constant control in fractional order systems. In third section, we will see the, the details of the proposed control scheme. And finally, we will see the application and some simulation results. In fractional order systems, in order to compute the fractional derivative, we can use different definitions. In this presentation, we will use Caputo definition. Caputo definition is shown on this slide. The derivative of f with respect to t uh, with order alpha can be computed like this. Is If alpha is an integer, it's a regular derivative. If alpha is not an integer, it can be computed through this uh, integral equation. By using this definition, we can represent a nonlinear system in this form. So in, here in fractional order systems, instead of having x dot is equal to f of t and x, we have dt alpha of x is equal to f of t and x. In order to prove the stability of an equilibrium point in fractional order systems, we can use uh, Lyapunov theory. So if we can find the Lyapunov function that is positive and is zero only at the equilibrium point, and its derivative is negative, so the equilibrium point is asymptotically stable. And if these properties hold globally, that equilibrium point is globally asymptotically stable. But please note that in fractional order systems, we should use fractional derivative uh, to prove the stability. If we look at the literature, the presented, uh, the presented work are mainly on linear systems, and the authors are usually using model predictive control to enforce constraints. And the constraints uh, considered are usually constraints on control input, like saturation. In this presentation, we will propose a new scheme, Express Reference Governor. It's a new version of the Reference Governor framework. We will apply this method on semi-linear systems. And by using this method, we can enforce constraints on state variables and control input or any combination. So before starting uh, with the details of the control scheme, I'd like to point out this comparison study. So this table compares three methods with uh, respect to three uh, performance uh, metrics, model predictive control, reference governor, and explicit reference governor. Model predictive uh, control provides the optimal solution, but it's computationally expensive and its implementation is difficult. Reference governor is also kind of optimal. Uh, of course, the, the cost function in reference governor is different than that of uh, model predictive control. Uh, it's, it, it still requires uh, some computations because uh, we should solve an optimization problem. And its implementation is not that easy. Of course, it's not, it's not difficult, but it's not that easy. For the, for the explicit reference governor, or EIG in short, it's not optimal, it doesn't provide the optimal solution, but its computation cost is very low and its implementation is simple. We will see it later. So the ERG framework has two steps. In the first step, we should pre-stabilize the system. To do so, we can use different control methods, linear state feedback, PID control, or whatever. And in the second step, we should enforce the constraint. In order to enforce the constraint, we will use an auxiliary reference. So, Consider this system. This system is a semi-linear fractional order system. dt alpha of x is equal to ax plus gx plus b u of t. As you can see, this system has two parts. The first part is a linear part, and the second part is a nonlinear part, uh, represented by g of x. We assume that the linear part is noun and the nonlinear part is unknown. But the only thing that we know about the nonlinear part is that that function, g of x, is Lipschitz. It means that there exists an epsilon that satisfies the inequality. And also, we assume that this semilinear fractional order system is subject to the uh, presented linear constraint. As you can see, it's a constraint, it's, it's a constraint on state variables and control. 
Okay, the first step, we should pre-stabilize the system. In order to pre-stabilize that semi-linear fractional order system, we use uh, state feedback control. It has two parts. The first part is uh, the state feedback and the second part is a fit forward action. So the feedback to stabilize the system and to fit forward action or to fit forward part, a part to guarantee the tracking. Uh, so K and G are design parameters. We should compute these design parameters. In order to compute K, we can uh, just compute K using pole placement methods. So the eigenvalues of the matrix A minus BK should be negative. And after computing K, we can compute G uh, through the, uh, the equation shown in the bottom. So Please note that X bar R is the equilibrium point associated with the desired reference R. In order to prove the stability of the equilibrium point, we can use this quadratic Lyapunov function, and it's proven in the paper that if the matrix P satisfies the inequality here for some theta, while theta satisfies the inequality shown in the bottom, so the equilibrium point is globally asymptotically stable. Okay, so we, pre we, we could pre-stabilize pre the system. Now, in the second step, we should enforce the constraint. As I mentioned, in order to enforce the constraint, we will use the ERG framework. So in the ERG framework, as you can see in this figure, instead of applying directly the desired reference to the system, we will use this desired reference to generate the auxiliary reference V, and then we will apply this V to the closed loop system. And this V should, uh, should be manipulated through this differential equation, V that is equal to K times delta times rho. K is an scalar, is a gain. Delta is called safety dy dynamic safety margin, and rho is called navigation function. Navigation function gives the answer to the following question. In what direction should the current reference change? It's equivalent to path planning problem uh, in uh, robotics. So the most intuitive choice for navigation function is shown here. It's a vector from the current auxiliary, auxiliary reference toward the desired reference. And in order to avoid uh, numerical problems, we modify it a bit. We add this smoothing factor here in the smoothing factor to the denominator of the navigation function just to avoid numerical problems. Dynamic safety margin gives the answer to the following question. How safe is it to change the current reference? So it means that dynamic safety margin is a measure of safety. There are several, several, uh, several methods to compute this measure. In this, in this presentation, we will use Lyapunov theory to, to, to compute this measure. Assume that the current state of the system is this purple X, and the green ellipsoid is the corresponding Lyapunov level set. We know that this Lyapunov level set is an invariant set. It means that by starting uh, from X, we will converge finally to the equilibrium point and we will never exceed this um, uh, Lyapunov level set. Now, if we can find the biggest Lyapunov level set that is entirely contained um, in the constraint, and we find the difference between this biggest Lyapunov level set and the current Lyapunov level set, we can use it as a measure of safety. So, to compute the dynamic safety margin, we, we just need to compute the gamma or the biggest Lyapunov level set. But how we can compute the gamma? Our Lyapunov function is a quadratic function and the constraints are linear. It's shown here. As I mentioned, the biggest, the gamma is the biggest Lyapunov level set that is entirely contained in the constraint. So in order to find this biggest Lyapunov level set, we just need to solve this optimization problem. Interestingly enough, this optimization problem is a convex optimization problem because the cost function, which is the Lyapunov function, is convex, and also the constraints, which, is a, which, which, is, which are linear, and are also convex. So we can find the closed form solution for the, the, the closed form for the solution of this optimization problem, and the closed form solution uh, is provided there. So in order to compute the dynamic safety margin, we just need to use this closed form solution. So in order to show the effectiveness of the proposed method, uh, we want to apply it in uh, drug delivery systems. Uh, here in this presentation, we consider a uh, closed loop anesthesia. In closed loop anesthesia, the long term uh, goal is to 
control the depth of hypnosis. Here, we only focus uh, on controlling the concentration of the hypnotic drug in the blood. So you can see the general uh, structure of the uh, general structure of the uh, proposed, uh, proposed uh, control system. Here we have a patient, we should compute uh, the drug concentration, and then we, we should send it to a control unit, and this control unit will, will control the administration rate to inject or not inject the hypnotic drug. In order to describe the relationship between the administrated dose and the drug concentration in the blood, we can use a three compartment model. In this three compartment model, we have three compartments. The first or the central compartment is visceral group. We denote the drug concentration in this, in this group by C1. The second group is lean group like liver, like kidney, heart, and we denote the drug concentration by C2. And the third uh, compartment or third group uh, is vessel pool group, and we denote the drug concentration by C3. So the drug can be distributed between visceral group and vessel pool group, and the distribution rates are K13 and K31, and also the drug can be distributed between uh, compartment 2 and compartment 1, and the distribution rate are K21 and K12. And the drug also can be eliminated, and we assume that the distribution uh, rate or the elimination rate is denoted by K10. And in this presentation, we assume that we use uh, propofol uh, as the hypnotic drug. So we can describe the relationship between the administrated dose and the drug concentration in the blood through this fractional order uh, differential equation. Here, uh, the matrix B is a known matrix for all patients, but the matrix A is unknown. In this presentation, we use the data set of uh, 44 patients. The, this data set, um, is real and is provided by our collaborators in University of British Columbia in Canada. So since A is unknown in general, we can compute a nominal A, then the A matrix for every patient is the uh, nominal A plus an uncertainty. So we can replace that uh, state space rep uh, representation by the following one. So in this case, A bar and B are known, and delta A X is unknown. Of course, it's not uh, this delta A X is not a nonlinear function, but we can treat it as an unknown nonlinear function, and it's obvious that it's Lipschitz. In order to prevent overdosing. The drug concentration in the central part or in the visceral group should be lower than 10 microgram per milliliter. So this is a safety constant and it's obvious that it's linked. Here we have uh, the first set of simulations um, are for unconstant scheme. Uh, we don't enforce the constant and we just use that uh, state feedback control to stabilize the system. The desired reference is R and we assume that alpha is equal to 0 0.9. As you can see, in all patients, C1 exceeds that safety level. It means that all patients are in the danger of overdosing. In the second step, we use the proposed control scheme to enforce the safety constraint. We have simulation results for different values of alpha, alpha equal to one, which is a rational system, alpha equal to 0 0.9, and alpha equal to 0 0.8. As you can see in all cases, the tracking is guaranteed. The C1 uh, converges to the desired reference, which is three. And the safety, the say, and, and the, the C1 profile doesn't exceed the safety level. It means that uh, the safety is guaranteed, or it's guaranteed that the patients will never uh, experience overdosing. Just, just a quick comment why we use different values for alpha, because if you look at the literature, you will find that different researchers are using different values for alpha. And the main reason is that uh, we don't have, a, have an extensive uh, data set to extract the real value of alpha. This is why we try to simulate with different values just to show that uh, respective of the value of alpha, the proposed control scheme can, um, can effectively ensure safety and also tracking properly. 